Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Whispering Hope Daily Lesson Study Review here with us. This week, we are studying the unified body of Christ. And this morning, our topic is the exalted Christ, giver of gifts. But before we go into our discussion, we'll invite Pastor Winston Joseph to give us our prayer, and then Pastor Orville Joseph will give us our memory text. All right, good day, everybody. It's good to be with you today. Just let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Almighty Father, oh God, we just want to thank you today for your grace and your mercy towards us. We're happy, oh God, that you have given us the opportunity to discuss your word today. May you fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit even now, and that as we discuss, oh God, those who are listening will be able to share and understand what we have been talking about. Fill us again, we pray, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Our memory text comes from Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. It says in the English Standard Version, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherd, and the teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up of the body of Christ. Amen, amen. And with that text in mind, we're going to begin with our insights and our main points that we get from our memory text. This week we'll begin with Pastor Winston Joseph and then Pastor Orville Joseph will come right after sharing with us what are some main points or insights that you get from our text this week. The memory text, as we said, and he gave some apostles. Uh, it looks to me that here is it, that there's something that is being given. As a matter of fact, we look at it and we understand that the gifts are being given here. And it says, he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers. And, and, but it doesn't stop there. He says he gave that, but he didn't stop. He says that they are given for a purpose. And the purpose that he's saying here, he says to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. So here is it, it tells me that it's given to leaders in God's church. And these leaders are to make sure that the ministry of God goes on and that it is expounded and placed on for other individuals. Not only that, it says for the building up for the body of Christ. So we have some persons who are pastors, some who are evangelists, and it's not about a self-praise thing. It's about us knowing full well what God is doing for us is to make sure that whatever gifts we have is supposed to come back to him. And when it comes back to him, he will be glorified. And that is what the insight I'm picking up. Gifts given, the Holy Spirit is given these gifts, or Jesus is given these gifts. And here it is, we are supposed to make sure that Christ is lifted up. Yes, the, the passage emphasizes that God, through the Holy Spirit, gifts individuals in the church for the effective ministry and development of the membership of the church. Clearly, Paul wants us to be able to embrace the fact that God has not left us up to ourselves. He has not left the church up to itself. But he has provided resources within the church, within in individuals, uh, so that individuals can nurture one another, support one another, encourage one another, and build up the body of Christ. Uh, I think we all have an obligation, a responsibility as children of God to make sure that we use whatever gifts we have been given so that the church can be built up. I like to suggest to people that when you don't use your gift, uh, the church is deprived of something that the, the that the Lord has placed within the church to benefit the church. It, it is like paying attention to your diet. When you deprive yourself of, of certain nutrients, the body is affected. I see that the gift to the church is a nutrient for the development of the church. And so it's important for all of us to be involved. I like the idea also that God has given to every individual a gift that they can use within the body of Christ. And as such, it suggests to me that Christ expects everybody in the church to be involved 
in ministry, to be involved in building up the church. And when you think of Seventh-day Adventist Church, you, you're you familiar with the appointment of various officers that would serve the church for a year or two years. And most times people believe that only those individuals have been chosen to do the work. And so it is important for us to be able to understand that they have been chosen to lead, but they are leading in ministry in which all those who have those particular gifts can serve the church in a very effective way. So I would say to encourage individuals through Paul, you know, the very text kind of suggests that I need to ask, what is my gift or realize what is my gift? If you're not sure about what your gift is, you need to talk to God about it. You need to inquire about it. The church uh, has developed a tool that helps people to determine what, what gifts they have. And so you can utilize that tool in order to arrive at your gift. Sometimes when you use that tool, it pops out at you, hey, listen, I didn't know that that was something I have, but hey, trust God every time and pray and talk with him and help uh, and ask him to help you to develop that gift for the benefit of others. I make this final point that the gifts are not for your personal benefit. So when God gives you with the, the gift of leadership, that is not necessarily for you to abandon the work of God and go and excel in the world. As, as, as a leader, God gives you the gift so that you can develop his work. It is to be used in ministry. And, and so that, that's where I want to end my comment on the text this morning. Amen, amen. So we're going to go and we're going to turn to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 to 10. We'll ask Pastor Winston Joseph to read that for us. Ephesians 4, 7 to 10. And then we're going to come right back and we're going to address our question. Ephesians 4, 7 to 10 is what it says. Ephesians 4, 7 to 10. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this he ascended. What does it mean by that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? Ten says, he who descended is also the one who ascended far above heaven that he might fill all things. Let me read it again, if you don't mind. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this he ascended. What does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. Ten says, he who descended is also the one who ascended far above the heaven that he might fill all things. Amen, amen. So our question here is, what is happening here? And what is Paul's point in these verses? We're going to begin with Pastor Orville Joseph and then Pastor Winston. If he wants to add anything, is free to do so after. I see in this passage... Paul making the point that Christ ascended, and when he ascended, he took with him trophies from earth to heaven as a demonstration of his commitment, a demonstration to the Father and to the host of earth that those who have been affected by death will have the opportunity one day to be restored and enjoy eternity with God. But, but the text goes on to say that the person who ascends, who is Christ, is also the person who descended, meaning for me that through Christ's death and, and resurrection, he demonstrates the ability to, one, die for our sins 
and become the sacrifice that needs to be paid for the penalty of our sins, but two, that he rose from the dead and ascended a high, the assurance to those who who give their confidence to God and accept him as Lord and Savior, that, that there is resurrection power in God. And that's why he takes, <laughs> you know, sometimes when you see the word taken captives, you know, it is usually used when people wage war on a nation and take people as prisoners of war. But here in this context, what you need to see it as is Jesus taking trophies from those who are dead in Christ. In other words, he demonstrated to death, to the grave, to Satan himself, that he has no stronghold on those who die in Christ. But he as Savior is able to take those who have been affected by death. And that's how I read the text here this morning. You know, um, Pastor Joseph, you have been eloquent in describing every single bit of this text here. It, it, I just want to add just a little bit here for us to understand, and you mentioned it, resurrection power, but not only resurrection power, it says, but to each one of us, raised was given according to a measure of Christ's gift. And so here is it, we must understand that the gifts that were handed to us, the gifts that were expressed to us, here is it, that is great. It's for, it's, as Pastor says, not for our personal benefit, but it's for uplifting. But the fact of the matter, we don't deserve these gifts. We don't deserve, but Christ wants to work with us in redeeming individuals, in making sure his church goes forward. But he says, he, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive. Now, mark you, because of sin, we are in a world of captivity. We're captive to sin. And so here is it that he uses the same connotation to let us know full well that here it is, that Jesus Christ, he is over sin. He has read victory and he's gotten victory over death. You understand? And so he's saying, hey, look, now from this place where there seems to be no hope, where there seems to be nothing that we can use, nothing that can, that can help us, Jesus is saying that he is the hope. He is the help in this system. And when he takes individuals from this system, those who have died because of sin, because that we know from the beginning, sin brings death. And because sin brings death, now Jesus is showing his power over death. His power. And he takes not only that, but he shows us that, hey, look, if you live in this life and you're faithful to me, you do the work that my that we have already assigned for you to do, being that pastor, being that evangelist, being that worker, that here is it, that you can also make it in the end. This is an example. Those captives that he would have taken from here is an example of what he will do in the second coming. It's an example for us to see full well that he can do it then and he will be doing it when he comes again. That's all I really wanted to add for us to have faith and hope in Jesus Christ, knowing that he's able to do all things. Amen, amen. So now an interesting question is being posed here. Now we know a lot of people who could sing and who can do so much different things. Can non-believers receive gifts? And if not, or if so, what is the difference between gifts and talents? So you're going to begin with Pastor Orville, and then Pastor Winston will come right after. Clearly, my understanding of the passage is that the gifts are given to the church. And the deeper implication of that is that they're given to the members of the church, which says to me that you have to be a part of the body of Christ in order to receive the gift that Christ is given to his church or to individuals. Let me put it that way. Because the passage did say he gave some. Okay, so some got some gifts, some got the other gifts, and some got the other gifts. So it, it is clear that the Spirit of God is given on behalf of God, of God the gifts to the church, to some members of the church, some gifts to some members. I, I just want to be clear on that. Some gifts to some members. So... Unequivocally, the answer to whether or not 
you can be outside of the church and receive the gift I want to suggest because that is not how God operates. Now you raise another question which I think Winston is going to answer. And uh, <laughs> But suffice it to say that individuals are born or develop certain acumen as they, as they develop naturally because God, you know, the way God makes us, he makes us being able to do things. And even as we do those things, we, we can perfect them. Uh, so in Pastor Joseph's family, he's an excellent singer. His, his wife is an excellent singer as well. And so singing in a family, the children growing up and hearing that, they develop a good ear for music and for uh, develop their voice for singing and so on. You know, in another family, you know, the parents might be more in terms of leadership, leading out in various areas in, in the church, and the children grow up observing that. They develop that argument, right? So th those things can, can be developed even naturally out in the world where you observe your parents or you go to school and you you see things happening and and, and you you take a liking to certain things and you begin to nurture it and culture it and develop it so that you perfect it and, and so that is a talent for me right and that's what a talent is and so I'm going to leave Pastor Joseph to tackle the, the remainder of, of the question and then if I need to butt in a little late I, I'll try to but you tackle all the question, man. You tackle all of the question because it's excellent for us to know. Just as Pastor Joseph rightly said, hey, look, the world. Once you're in the world and you're not connected to God, this is a talent. You you don't take this as grace being granted to you. And this is what we need to understand that when Jesus Christ he he died and he he left he he left us gifts. He left us gifts through grace. And when we understand our relationship with God, when we understand that these things are to be used by God, then I will not claim them for myself. When I'm in the world and I was, uh, I was there looking at uh, being a, a, a manager, as the case may be, I I'm thinking of myself. I'm good enough for this. But when you understand that it's on behalf of God that you're, you're doing all these things and that God should be lifted up, when you really understand that, then you realize that God has given me a gift to be used for him. And that's so important. You, know, you, you said, and I, I like what Pastor Joseph because he made it clear that no, a non-believer cannot receive the gift. You will develop the acumen for talent. And that's it. But when you become a Christian, when you become connected to Jesus Christ, Jesus now helps you to understand that what you're doing is for my glory. It's for his glory. And so when you do them now, you're not doing them for self-worth, but you're doing them to make sure that God is lifted up. That's the key factor we need to look at. We have to make sure that he is lifted up. I, I just want to take the end part of the, the stuff here now. It says, nine, it says, what does it mean that he also first descended into the well, lower part? And I'm talking about even though he did all that just for us and our gifts and our talents. Because like it or not, he's saying, hey, buddy, you who have worked, because like we you know we can sin by t taking these gifts and want to use them for ourselves. Hmm. Because we're not holding on to what God has decided for us. And now we're saying we know him, but yes, we've flaunted it as our own. Now take for instance, Pastor Joseph said, hey, look, Pastor Joseph is in a family that sings, yes, thank you very much, my wife sings, the <laughs> children sing, I give glory to, <laughs> to God for that, you know what I'm saying? But I'm saying to you, I'm saying to all of us out there, when you realize that you are part of the family of God, let God be glorified. Let him be lifted up through the talents that you have, through the gifts that you have been given. Understand that there's nothing that you can do to assist yourself with this, but allow the Holy Spirit to direct you, direct you totally. And that is where God wants all of us to be. That's important to me. Amen, amen. So now we are establishing that gifts are for those who are followers of Christ, who believe in Christ. Now, at what point in time 
are these gifts given to believers? Is it at birth they have it and it stays dormant, and then when they give their life to Christ, it becomes um, apparent, or they get it out of the blue? So you will tell us at what point they get it, and with that in mind, did believers have gifts before Christ ascended? So we we'll begin again with Pastor Orville and then Pastor Winston. It is clear that when a person accepts Jesus Christ, we, no, we made the point before. Let me just pivot back. We made the point before that an unbeliever, as someone who is not connected with Christ or part of the body of Christ, uh, does not receive the gift. And I would want to submit that um, there are clear evidence that when a person accepts Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, that God gifts them. And that it is at that birth, it is at that birth, your new birth, when you're born of the water and the spirit, that you receive the gift of God. And Paul also makes it plain to that at that time you receive also the Holy Ghost as well. So it is important for us to understand that. Now, talents, I've made a point before, and I, 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 I think I can hold to that, that some talents are not, well, talent to be doesn't appear to be inherited. Um, and so, but what I can say is that, as I said before, folks were exposed to certain things, pick it up, some people pick it up very early in their lives and run with it. And so you will find that, you, I mean, one of the things that in Antigua, that there was a famous family um, called the Mason family. Uh, and people would know that Oscar Mason loved his music and children, uh, you know, and, and even grandchildren came up and developed the same kind of passion for that. And so those kind of things happen. Those are talents that you get and they, you can get them at a very early age. At birth, if Ellen White is correct, maybe I'm wrong here. It, meaning that even in the womb, we can culture our ch children towards a desire for singing, a, a desire in terms of how we behave. That is quite quite possible, but it is not something that person inherit, but something that is cultured and developed for an individual. So far as the Christian is concerned, talent continues to be a part of God's purpose in your life. And I also want to register that I believe that once God gives an individual, just as how talents are nurtured and developed, that that gift develops and grow. And even if a person falls away from Christ, the cultured behavior and attitude and skills and knowledge that were developed as a result of receiving the gift continues to be there. But here is a significant thing because, because the gift is supposed to be used in a particular climate. If it is not used in a particular climate, it is no longer continued to be nurtured in that climate and therefore has the possibility a potential of decline. And so you watch people sometimes who have been so fervent and passionate for church and for God and they fall away and then they, they lose absolutely all interest in the things that they had a passion for. Not only that, but they don't do it with the same vigor, skills, etc. Because that's what a gift does. When the Holy Spirit stays with you, not only does he help you to develop the acumen for, but he's ever present with you in the execution and development of that gift. And so when you don't no longer allow him to do that, the gift no longer function at its optimum. You know, uh, that's very good, uh, Pastor, I'm saying here. Because when I look at it, eh, I, I, know, I want us to really understand that when I look at it here, it, when, we begin, when we become part of Christ, when we are baptized, when we have given our heart to Christ, it's a, we are a new creature. We are born again. And so because we are born again, we must understand that here it is now. God has given us a, a new way of life. And so the, the talents that we once have, talented individuals, we recognize that they are gifts from God. They are gifts. And we need to understand that's where the gifts come in. When we say new creatures, it says, hey, look, that the Holy Spirit comes in. And I want us to know the Holy Spirit has been active all the time. Yes. But the fact of the matter is, no, it is active in us. And I think Pastor Joseph ascended to said that in the last part. The gifts come in and, and the Holy Spirit is with us. And the Holy Spirit is what allows the gifts to shine through us. We begin to develop it. We become to do the things. 
we begin to say the right things at the right way. And because of the power of the Holy Spirit in us, our gifts are developed. I like the fact that Pastor Joseph alluded to the fact that, hey, look, if we become Away, if we step up, away away from God, we, we're not holding on to God anymore. We begin to lose it. You see, and that's why I like the fact that we are not once saved, always saved. So our continuum with Christ must be what we're going. We're going on totally every time, every day. We are doing it anew. We're making things right with God. So we keep on in fervor. And doing what God desires from us. We must understand that as individuals, every day, it's a choice. Every minute, it's a choice. Every second, it's a choice to follow God. And whilst we follow God, yes, God will develop our gifts. He will multiply them. Uh, Pastor Jones talk about the spiritual gift inventory. When you go to the inventory, you realize, wow, I was a speaker before when I was in the world. But now I'm a preacher for God. I, I'm a singer before, uh, as a talent. You know what I'm saying? But here it is now that I'm ministering on behalf of God. And we will realize and recognize that, hey, look, there's certain talents that we have dominant in our lives. Because many of us will have more than one talent. Right? Back then in the world. But when we come to God, God lets us know that, hey, look, we're in a new creation. New thing on the board. These are gifts for my glorification. I will never stop saying it. It's not for me. It's not for you. But it's for God's glorification. Amen, amen. So we're coming to the end of our discussion. Now, here we are making it a little bit more personal. Now, however deep these few verses in Ephesians may be, how can we learn to draw comfort from what they show Christ has done for us and will do, especially when he will fill all things everywhere with himself? So we'll begin again, Pastor Orville and then Pastor Winston. For me, these verses are comforting because you have the assurance that God is prepared to do everything possible for you to develop, grow, be nurtured, be secured, and assured in him so that he has not left you. So what he has done, one, is that he has provided the Holy Spirit to be with you always and to even give you the gifts that you need in order to move to the second point that I draw from the verses, which is to help others. So there's a twofold thing where God gives the Holy Spirit to help you, but he also empowers others as well to help you on your journey forward. So even God is not, is not leaving, up, leaving it up to God alone to make sure that you make it into the kingdom, but that God uses your fellow men. And that's why Paul, I think, keep emphasizing the, the whole idea about supporting one another, encouraging one another, praying for one another, making sure that we assemble ourselves with one another, especially as it comes to close to the end of time. Because Jesus is emphasizing that we can work together, that we need each other in order to make it to the kingdom. And that gives me excitement. Now, first, I must ac accept the fact that I have been given the responsibility and the empowerment to help others as much as I have the desire to be helped by others. And so that those realizations are things that we, we need to be able to hold dear. It is important also for us to recognize that God is prepared. You know, Paul says about filling all things. Uh, that is making sure that we attain to the fullness of God through the activity of the Holy Spirit and through our service in the cause of God. When I look at it, I like to take something that I hold dear to my ministry, and that is Sungu, no better than Lungu. None better than none. It means, therefore, that here is it that I am here. I might be a, a singer, but the fact of the matter is somebody else is a preacher. And 
The singing can't take me everywhere because the preacher must talk to me and tell me something. The, the community service must do something. You, you understand? And so it's important for us to realize that we all help one another. But it can't be me just helping you of my own. But it has to be of the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why Jesus, when he left this earth, he breathed onto the disciples. And he would have, he would have assigned the Holy Spirit to this world. And I'm saying to you, the Spirit goes about here, there, and everywhere, talking to us, guiding us. And I'm saying to you that it tells me that Jesus Christ is true head of this church. He's the head of this church. And because he's the head of this church, he, he has not left us, but he has sent us a paracletos. He tell, sent us something exactly like himself. And so God here is letting us know full well that, hey, look, the same power that Jesus Christ would have given his disciples when he was here with them, the same power is given to you. But the power is not to glorify you, but it's for God to be glorified. I'm just grateful to know full well that even the little boy that I might meet may have something to help me. Even the older individuals or maybe somebody in the, that's lying in the gutter who is drunk or drugged out. But somehow they have a connection to Jesus Christ, but they do have a fault. But I'm saying to you that here it is, that I might learn even something from any individual around. Let us understand that God uses anything in order to teach us something. God be praised. Amen. Amen, amen. So we've come to the end of our discussion and cannot end without our takeaways now we have learned a lot about gifts and talents this morning but you can only choose one point that is your takeaway from our lesson study so we'll begin with pastor winston this time around and then we'll end with pastor orville what is your takeaway from our lesson today my takeaway today is that nothing that i own no gifts that I have belongs to me exclusive for me. It is for the building up of God's church. That's my takeaway. Everything I have is for the building up of God's church. And all of us should have that in our mind. Okay, for me this week, the, the fact that Christ gives gifts to the church so that individuals in the church can work together to grow, to develop each other in the church, yeah. shows me that Christ wants us to be more and more like the Godhead, working together, synchronizing together, strategizing together to make sure that great things happen for each other in the work of God. And I pray that by God's grace, all of us can work together. Yes. Amen. That has brought us to the end of our discussion this morning. We're glad that you could have joined us as we studied. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning when we'll be studying the topic, Gifts of the Exalted Jesus. So share the link with a family, share the link with a friend, and join us as we continue to study together.